Shade City, blooming metropolis on the west coast of Adelia. Touted as a place of opportunity, the reality is that even if you find what you want, you need the luck, skill, and guts to get it. And then there's the matter of keeping it, an endeavor that will keep you looking over your shoulder forever after. We begin our game in the afternoon of a fall day. A gray sky and a drizzling rain inspires pedestrians to quicken their pace through the streets. Umbrellas angled to counter the precipitation. The lights of elemental-powered automobiles flare as they pass by. On a street corner, a small cart selling warm Orox Euros is being pulled under an awning by its orcish owner. Across the street, we see a large gray building bearing a sign reading Shade City Police Department, Precinct 12. Passing through the front doors, we see a large room holding a dozen or more desks manned by the various officers of the precinct. Sitting at the one closest to a cracked and drafty window and a leaky pipe quietly dripping into a pail is our first friend of the night. Uh, Patrick, if you'd please describe to us your character. So I am playing Elhan Anderson, police officer, uh, detective of the S, uh, SCPD. Um, he's currently stationed in the 12th precinct. I am a half-elf. Um, and, you know, kind of, you know, I'm so as a half elf, I'm not as tall as, you know, most of my human brethren, but I'm, you know, I'm tall for an elf, probably around like five foot 11 or so. Um, I have, you know, dark brown hair. I'm, you know, unlike my real appearance, cleanly shaven, um, very tightly, you know, very neatly dressed, um, very orderly. Um, I'm sitting by the I'm sitting by the drafty window currently playing with a little pocket watch um, open, just clicking it open and shutting it you know, over and over again repeatedly as I uh, wait for my next assignment. Yes. So you actually, before long, are given a stack of paperwork. You being the newest member of the precinct, you are often tasked with the leftover work that people don't want to do. Um, there used to be a more hefty hazing um, experience, but that got faded out to just a lot more paperwork. So one of the little clerks comes over with a stack of papers and just sets them on your desk. Um, nearby, you see your partner, Officer Adlin, fast asleep at his desk, um, kind of curled up with his arms on the table. Uh, you also see uh, your the the captain of this station. Uh, this is Captain Frank Ellis. He is massive, a very very large, broad shouldered guanty, uh, more snake than man uh, sort of abomination with the big old cobra hood. His you have to imagine that his tie is a clip on because there's no way that it would go all the way around that really wide neck. Um, a nice uh, coral snake pattern tie. He's got his little coffee cup. He walks up over and sort of kicks your desk. Anderson, I asked you to, I, I, how's that missing person case coming along? It's coming, you know, I've got a few leads, you know, but I was trying to get Adlin up as, you know, as you could, you know, is a pain when he, he just he enjoys his naps too much. So well, moment we got, you know, moment he's up, we're out of here. Okay. I mean, I know we've got a bunch of them, but we do need to get something done around here. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do when I point at Adlin? I mean, you came in here all bright-eyed, ready to do some good, so you can do some good, even if he's your your senior officer, you can go. You can okay, if you're along. giving me permission to leave my partner behind, I will leave my partner behind. Uh, I mean, he's been around here a while. I know I know how it is. Okay, then I will gladly let him take his naps and I will go do the real work. <laughs> With that, I will stand up and you know, tip my hat and say, see you later, Captain. And he is start not. walking out. 
start As you're out, about to door. exit the door, um, a trio of people walks in. You recognize uh, officers Rogers and Benton, who uh, they're a bit more... I can't think of a better word, except they're they're kind of the bros of the, uh, the precinct. They are very... Uh, full of testosterone <laughs> and willing to show it. And in between them, they've got um, someone handcuffed. Um, Adam, would you please describe your character to us? My uh, my name is Nicholas Eugene Glass. Not Glass, not Gloss. It's Glass. I am a, uh, a rather dashing-looking elf. High elf, to be precise, very important. And I am currently being hauled into this filthy, disgusting den of miscreants by some, uh, ingrates who, uh, <clears throat> are ruining my well-tailored suit. I, uh, represent an important member of the community, so I have to look quite nice, and, uh, don't worry, they will be hearing about it. Uh, all right, so as you're being pulled in by the two officers, one of them, uh, Officer Rogers, kind of holds a hand out to um, Elhan as you're passing, saying, hey, where do you think you're going? We've got someone for you to process. Captain's asked me to go work a missing persons case. Kind of got to go do that. I mean, we've got this guy right now. Can, this person's missing. You got 10 minutes. I mean, fine. All right, whatever. I guess I can help out. Yeah, I could process this person and you know, missing person, you know, don't 24 hours. That's what they tell us. It's always in the meetings. So you've got 24 hours before a missing person's case just turns cold. But you know, I guess I can take 10 minutes to go process this person for you. Excuse me. Is, is someone going to get the thing off of me or are you going to debate? Yeah, just come with me. I'll grab yeah uh, Gene and Eugene Gene? Gene? Gene, right? You can Gene. call me Gene, yes. I'll grab him and start taking him over towards the processing desk and... Watch it there. This suit is probably worth more than three months of your paycheck. Lots of things are worth more than three months of my paycheck. It's not a very big paycheck. But... Why do you do what you do? I have my reasons. All right, so I pull out the paperwork. What's your name? Uh, you can call me Gene. Uh, for the paperwork, I need your full name. Yes, Gene. So your full name is just Gene. Yes, sir. Not so Gene, Gene Smith? Gene, that's you it. You don't need my full name, officer. I'll be I out of here do this time. <laughs> I gotta do this by the book. You get that, right? I, I gotta get your full name. I have given you my name. Gene Pain in the Butt <laughs> Smith. All right. Pain in the Glass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Trace, you're clearly an elf. High elf, I'm presuming? Uh, yes. Not one of these low wood elves. My mother was a wood elf. Well, you're a policeman. I'll just let that go for now. Um, occupation. Businessman. Uh, auditor, actually. Put down auditor. Auditor. All right. First real answer I've gotten out of you tonight. Um, then let's see. Um, next. Why were you brought in today? Because I was doing business. I was a businessman. And I happened to a... Um, I don't know, get on the wrong side of your uh, associates, friends, school bullies. Yeah, seems like an accurate assessment. All right. Um, so what was the reason they told you they were bringing it anyway? I guess you'd have to ask them. They didn't give you a reason for arresting you? I mean, I'm sure that they did. However, I got bored. I'm going to be out of here before too long. And what makes you think that? How new are you? Just 
started last week. So that means you don't know who I am. Looks, uh, nope, not a clue. Does the name Glass <laughs> mean anything to you? Oh, oh, you're Glass. Oh, I've heard it talked about you before. I know you. Not Glass, not Gloss, it's Glass. Uh, I think I'll stick with glass. It's a lot easier on the tongue. Okay, it's not. Okay, it's not. all right, all right, all right. We'll call you, we'll stick with Gene. How does Gene work? Very well. So, Gene. Uh, excuse me, I don't know your name, sir. Who you are? Oh, I apologize. I'm uh, Elhan, Elhan Anderson. Yes, yes, quite right. Anyway, I don't know your name. Continue, uh, thug. So anyway, I could I could go ask those officers why they brought you in, but they're not my favorite people. Do you have you just, you just tell me why you were brought? Like I said, I was conducting a business for my employer. And who is your employer? Nope. Well, I mean. I realize I can hold you here as long as I want till you, know, you, you tell me something until you've got your process so you can make this easier on me just by uh, giving me a little bit of information I can't tell you alright cool well then in that case um, murder great murder right. now mean, hold on just a second you have no evidence I mean if I don't I don't need evidence to hold you if I put down that it's murder that you're here for. I just need, you know, get, you know, get some time. You know, I can go put you in the, I'll you know, put you in the lockup. You know, I can hold you for at least 24 hours. And then I will by that time, who knows what I'll kind of cover. You, you seem to be, I've, I've heard of you, Glass. I'm, I'm sure that I can find something that will stick. It's not Glass. Gene, then. I have a proposition. You interested in hearing? Do tell. I am positive that I can find something to stick you in jail for. Positive. <laughs> I've heard of you. We know. I know. You know. I'm, if I dig around. But clearly, you've done something or have an arrangement here to have gotten out as many times as you've, uh, or gotten out of trouble as many times as you have. I need information, and the word on the street is you are one of the people that I can ask to get that information. You see, I don't walk the streets. I don't have any idea where you heard that from. I mean, you don't have to walk the streets that have been heard of. Point being, you have information, and I need it. And... I can, you know, I'll, uh, otherwise I'll go digging and I will dig so far deep that I'll be able to bury you and you won't be seeing the light of day for years. I mean, I know you're an elf, so you live a really long time, but I'll be able to stick you in there that you'll probably be like two, three hundred years by the time I get you out of, by the time you get out. Is that what you want? Well, officer, come back when you have something, but... What you're asking of me, I just cannot do. It's fine. I can dig. Or I can ignore anything that I find if you're willing to help me get some information. Kind of uh, an informant. Mm. Just... You see, this little spat... That me and my friends had with your friends out in front of a, uh, one of our establishments. It's not worth the price that I would have to pay to tell you anything. 
Cool. All right. Well, so uh, spat assaulted a police officer. That that's what you're admitting to right now. No, a friendly disagreement. Look. At this point, uh, Adlin, a couple deaths over, kind of like stretches and yawns. Ugh. And he looks down at a folder on his desk. And you see his his eyes go wide, his wide cat-like eyes. He is a big sort of like Siamese cat tabaxi. And he uh, turns around to you, Elhan. Uh, dude, oh, we need to go uh yeah we need to go there's that that case that we had we need to we need to go i think yes yeah, very descriptive needed to go mm. for a while now felix however i got dumped with this guy i mean just throw him in the back i mean fine all right heaven i motioned it to, to you know, just patrol officers who are just sitting around and saying, take this guy, get a guy to lock up. I'll be back for him later. Maybe he feels like he wants to talk. Again, officer, I won't be speaking to you till you have some information worth speaking about. I most likely won't be here when you return. And so, I bid you a good day. Oh, and whoever you're looking for, you probably won't find them. Yeah, tell me what else is new. I am going to give you, Patrick, the information about this missing person. Perfect. I'll send you that right now. Why that needs to come as a picture, I don't know. There you go. Okay, and a couple of the those beat cops come over. Um... I'll take you over to just the, the lockup in the back, Gene. Hmm. This place is filthy. I mean, we don't get paid to clean it. Hmm. All right, then. You hooligans locked up. You know who I am. Get out of my way. They kind of like, okay. And they uh, lock up the, the cell and they uh, walk out. I'm going to walk over to one side and look at a couple uh, folks who have just kind of sat there and kind of like wave at them. Mm -hmm. There's just... this big um, orcish guy sat next to a Goliath guy, very like cut up and scarred. And he's like, uh, yeah, sure. And wait, 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 wait. You clean your mess up first. This bench oh. is mine. Okay. The rest of you. So Share over there. Don't get anywhere near me. You okay. smell it. <laughs> so the the Goliath like kind of like sweeps off. He like takes a little bit of his his shirt and like wipes off the the bench, and then they clear off and sit, leaving you by yourself. Sure, it may not even help. Not to burn these pants. Okay. Is there anything that you want to do inside the cell? Is there anybody that I recognize? Um, maybe a couple, but not any that are probably of much help to you. This is, um, the useful people don't tend to get caught unless the deck is stacked against them, like it was for you. Hmm. You, you see a couple people who look fairly hungover they probably got brought in for, you know, disruptive behavior, public indecency, those sorts of things that happen when people get a little bit too tipsy at night. Are there any officers that I recognize? Um, so the officers actually have left the, the lockup alone. There's none nearby. It's not even a guard. <laughs> not even any who might be sympathetic towards my cause, so to speak. So you, you're actually fairly familiar with Precinct 12 of it is not extremely organized. It is not very well put together. Some of that is intentional and is influenced by people you know. Um, and some of it is just left 
to fall apart at times. So are there anyone here that I could get a hold of? Tell me, kind of fill me in and let me know why on earth I, the deck got stacked against me all of a sudden. Who exactly I pissed off to enable me to get caught. Um, make a, just an intelligence check. I got in 18. All right. Um, so just thinking through, if it was someone in the police department, it could be a wide number of people, not anyone that you would necessarily know. But if there was someone who kind of turned on you, it's probably someone you are familiar with in your organization, on your side. Do we, does my organization have any contacts in Precinct 12? Um, not really. Your boss was the one who kind of dealt with them specifically. She, and she did not tell you, she hasn't told you of her people inside. So I have to wait it out. Nobody recognized the green tie, it would seem. <laughs> you know you by reputation, not necessarily specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess I have to wait until I am approached or released, whichever comes first. All right. All right, then we're going to move several blocks over to the Tin Man. Uh, Ian, can you describe your character for us, please? Yeah, so he is a about like seven foot tall uh warforged so he's got he's got metallic skin glowing blue eyes um and he's sitting at sitting at his desk which is in an office which is about the size of a bedroom um it's got a closet that's barely a barely a closet um this is also where he lives uh and so he's sitting there he's got just a black jacket on kind of a trench coat looking thing um he's like kind of done this a lot so he's got kind of a beard looking thing, but it's just scratch marks from his hands. Um, and so he's doing that. And he's sitting there and he's tinkering on a little like sort of gun looking thing as he's looking down. Um, he looks very serious as he's doing it, kind of really focused in on it. Not really looking around, but just at it. While you're sitting there working on your little projects and stuff, uh, the doorbell to your office goes off he just like goes come in as he like doesn't really look up there's a pause hear the door open and some very quiet footsteps behind you and a low voice um hello is this uh is this where uh where the 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 detective office i I'm not sure if I come to the right place. Yep, this is, uh, this is, my name's Sev. I'm the detective here. Uh, yep, this is the correct place. He doesn't really look up, but he does kind of just say it like this. So he's less focused on it. He's like, you can come around, come to the front. Um, cause his back, I guess, is turned towards her. All right. They see this little gnomish woman kind of walk up around and hoist herself into the chair in front of your to the side of your desk, actually, not to the front. She's sitting there. She looks very nervous, very uncomfortable. Um, hi, um, are you busy? Are you accepting cases right now? I'm always accepting cases. Uh, I just, I just gotta know what, uh, try to get to them when, when, what's going on? Right. Um, well, so it's about my husband. He's been gone for a few days. I took it to the to the police, but I haven't heard back from them, and it's been a few days I now. I mean, yeah, I was always that. told to trust the officers and to, you know. He does a little chuckle as he kind of puts down his tools. He's like, yeah, yeah, they'll tell you that. Um, 
And so, okay. He goes, missing, huh? Uh, was he evolved anything shady? He kind of starts going through a list of, like, normal things. He's like, shady, you know, has he done any drugs? He's just kind of very blatantly accusing her husband of being, like, a shady person. Uh-huh. And her, her like, little eyes go like, wide. No, he was he was a painter. He was a house painter. He was part of a, a small small business that just got a um, a really big contract just a few weeks ago, and they were going out to celebrate. You know, I had, and he's no, he's very much an honest man. Never did anything wrong. He's. I'm sure. Well, I don't. I don't know what could I'm have really happened. Really sure. To him. Yeah. Um. Okay. He goes. Can you pay? Um, yes, I, I have a little bit, just some extra savings and things, um, but not very much. I only have 15 gold pieces. I'll do it for two. Okay. Is, is what he says very blatantly. He's like, kind of, he's like, and so missing, he kind of looks through his other cases. None of them are really missing persons. He's like, I'll focus on yours. Okay. You said he, said you he so didn't much. do anything wrong that you know of? No, uh, I mean... Where did he go to celebrate? Um, he and his friends went to that Silverleaf Lounge. There was some performance. I think it was the cousin of one of the one of the other guys. But I don't... He didn't Alrighty. say who it was. Alrighty. And what is your husband? As he pulls out, like, a little pen and paper. She describes him to you, just very, like, sort of nondescript. Just average height, average oh, build, oh, brown hair, boy. brown eyes. <laughs> this makes it really easy on me. That's what he says as he's writing it down. Uh, and he's like, and uh, do you happen to know any name of the co-workers that I should know of? Anybody that you can think of? Uh, well, there was Morris. He's He was uh, the manager for the, the little group. Um He's also, he's a gnome company? like us. It, they're all, there's all gnomes and then there's one uh one half orc he's really tall he holds the ladder up and everything ladder is what he writes down he's literally writing out everything she says like as she says it he's like and what's the name of the company that they work at uh it's just tindwell co it was morris's business And then anything, anybody that he's been, like, hanging out with lately that you can think of that's not normal? No, they've been really focused. They've been working really hard to get this contract with. Um, at this It's a department store, Estelle's, that new place that's going to open in a few weeks. He writes it down. He's like, probably not important off the side. Um, he's like, all right, I'll do it. And, I mean, besides that... I mean, you don't think maybe he ran up on his own? I maybe he didn't like the life at home? I thought we would. It was. It's always been great at home. I can't imagine that he would want to leave. Although, I mean, Says. my sister was telling me how, you know, when someone gets a big windfall like that, that sometimes they start to question sort of things that they have in their lives and she starts like kind of tearing up and like trying to hold it back Seth goes yeah sometimes they do as he just writes that down he's like he's like yeah sometimes that happens um uh, okay yeah uh I'll get working on this I'll do you have any sort of any way for me to contact you if I learn anything yeah she know, writes down her little home that. number address and her address for you to be able to contact her Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get working on this. Uh, do you, can you give me one gold up front? Just for basically transportation. Yeah, sure. Uh, the name, by the way, her name is Candace. Her husband's name is Andrew. And they are the Wiles. I want to point out, Sev asked, didn't ask purposely. <laughs> <laughs> he, and he's like, all right. But yeah, oh. she she gives you um, Andrew's business card, which has the number on it, and then she writes the home address on the back. Does it look anything special for any sort of reason? The business no, card? No, it's not even a real okay. business card. It's just a square of paper with like pencil written information on it. 
So I was like, all right. And so he gets up, and he's like, kind of takes the thing he was working on, puts it in one holster, pulls the other gun out of his um, drawer, puts it in the other holster. When, when you pull your gun out, uh, little Candace kind of like, Oh, I thank you so much. I should probably go now. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I have to shoot people. So I, I have the... Uh, oh, oh, wow. Okay. Um, it's very I'll, important. I really hope that I will hear from you later. Um, good luck and thank you very, very much. And she turns and scurries out of the room. So she goes, she's nice. She's, she's nice. I'm glad I'm helping. Um, Sev looks very proud of himself because he fully believes that that was a, that was a good a human interact. Uh, uh, and so he, he like leaves and locks up the office, uh, which is just this tiny little between two buildings. Mm-hmm. And he See? like hails a cab. So as you turn around after locking the door, right in front of you as you turn around is uh, your friend Tano. She's holding up an envelope. Uh, She's like, uh. good morning. Or I guess what? Afternoon? Evening almost? This was on uh, your doorstep. You might want this. He takes it. Thanks, Tano. Were you just standing outside my door again? No. Why, why would I do that? It's from Ava, by the way. She wants you to come by and see her later. He just slowly lets out a breath, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to stop by." Besides that, I mean, I just locked up the place. Did you want to go in for any sort of reason, Tano? No, I was just swinging by just to see if there's anything going on, anything I need to know about. I am working a case. I'll stop okay. by. Okay. It's a missing persons case. Oh, those are my favorite. Okay. I know. Yeah, so probably just ran off with a mistress. You know how. Tano. Yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. You know, most of the missing person cases that I hear about, they never get resolved. And then, you know, a few years later, they're off living somewhere else in some big penthouse or something. He goes, or dead in the ditch. You know, you know how it is. Uh, I don't I don't usually hear about those so much, but yeah, I guess so. I do. He kind of looks up. I do. Um, anyways, uh, I gotta go to this lounge, the silver whatever lounge. He kind of looks at his notes as he says that, because he really doesn't remember. <laughs> um, he's oh, like, the silver leaf yeah, is just uh, real nice. Is it? I've literally never heard of it. It's really swinky. It's in that sort of, you know, elven part of town, the Aspen Quarter. Right, that's why I can't go there. Got it. Yeah. That's why I, that's why I wouldn't be able to go normally. Right, okay. Yeah. Really uh, nice yeah, place. so I gotta go there and ask around, because apparently that was the last time seen. So, you know. He kind of looks, he's like, I don't, I, I hope you have a good day, Tano, as he kind of turns and starts to walk away, because he okay. opens up the letter as he does so. All right, and it, yeah, like, yes, it's, it's just it. on the inside, it just says, um, he said, could you come by? Sometime in the next couple of days, I need help, help with something. From Ava. He just does his... Oh, as he reads it. And he, like, raises his hand to, to get a taxi. Okay. And we'll cross over to the Silverleaf. Uh, Sarah, can you tell us about your character? I'm playing Vivian Baker. She is about 5'6". She has dark brown hair, green eyes, she's slender, she is also a half-elf. Um, she works at the Silverleaf for now until she gets her big break. Yes, the Silverleaf being a very decent like central location for artists and musicians to perform. It's very well known as like the hot spot for that sort of stuff, at least in this part of town. Uh, so you're uh, hanging out at your little station when people come in, and you see your friend uh, and roommate Tina walking back. Oh my gosh, Viv! 
I am going to kill the next man who asked me how hard it hurt me when I fell from heaven. I swear by my great uncle Cadmus, I will just strangle him with a halo. I cannot handle this. You'd think they would come up with some better pickup lines by now. No, but it's the same one every single time. Uh, Are they at least tipping well? I mean, usually, I'll be honest, usually I kind of get a little hot-headed and I tell them to, you know, fly off a cliff or something, and they don't tip so well after that. Gotta learn to keep it cool, Tina. I just... It feels so demeaning, you know, when they're just like, oh, wow, look at that. Look at the halo. That it's just, it's, I don't like it. The fact that Elton asked me to wear, you know, like the, the little extra scarf with the wings on the back, not cool. I don't really appreciate that. Yeah, I can see that. That, that was a bit tacky of him. Just, it's, I know that there's not a lot of ASMR like me in this area of town, but that's, ugh, whatever. Anyway. Is everything going okay back here? Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there was that one incident with that gentleman who didn't want to check his great sword. But it, why would you want to sit with a great sword and a shield and eat anyway? It'd be uncomfortable. Yeah, unless you were trying to eat with it, like use it as a big, like a toothpick almost. He was very large. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That would make a big mess, though. Yeah, it would be pretty ridiculous. But, you know, I just wanted to check in on you, make sure you, that everything was good. Yeah, things are going well. Okay. Try to keep your cool, though. The more tips you get, the more money you can save. Eventually, you can get someplace even better than this. But then, I, then we wouldn't be roommates anymore, and that wouldn't be so great. Sometimes I don't mind... The fact that neither of us have been discovered yet because, you know, we, we get along so swell. But what if we both get discovered at the same time? Then we can both rent a new, better place. That is... That's an idea. We need to work on some sort of act that we can do together a little bit more. Yes. You're a thinker, thing. Tina. I... Thank you very much. I try to be a thinker. But I gotta go, um, gotta go serve some more drinks. I'll be back later, okay? Right, okay, bye. Right, and she turns to go. And at this point, um, well, actually, where, I do need to ask this. Elhan, where, where are you and Adlin going? My guess is probably the Silverleaf. It's the last mm -hmm. known location that our missing person was last heard about. So we're definitely going to the Silverleaf. Okay. All right, so this point is when two police officers walk through the front door of the establishment. Hello, mm. welcome to the Silverleaf. Greetings, um, yeah, thanks, greetings. Yeah, we're uh, just wondering if we could ask some questions. Okay. Um, were you, you're an employee here? Yes. Would you like to check your hat or your coat? Uh, no, I'm all right. I don't think we'll be staying that long. Um, not here for pleasure, unfortunately. Um, but, um, so, um, I am, and I flash my golden detective's badge. I'm Detective Elhan Anderson. Um, this is my partner, Officer Felix Adlin. Um, we just have a few questions about, um, someone who may have been here. Were you working here checks my notes uh four nights ago i believe it was i'm working here most nights most nights all right um there this would have there would have been a large party of gnomes that came in um they were you know they were celebrating something um I'm just curious if you um <clears throat> yeah just curious if you if you possibly had seen them if they if they if they were here just trying to verify some information she remember a large party of gnomes? Um, yes. This is not an area of town where gnomes often pass through. Being more of like that elven spot of town, it was a... And plus the fact that they were not as um, rich as your usual patrons. They There was definitely a bit of an obvious group. There's like a half dozen of them and they're half-orc 
uh, companion as well that you would remember. Yes, yes, I think I do remember. Maybe about six of them with a half orc. Perfect. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, that's, that sounds right. Um, where do you remember one by the name of Andrew? Andrew Lyles. I see so many people. I'm not sure I remember specifically an Andrew. That's fair. That's, fair. that's understandable. Um, um, so did you serve their table? Um, did you, or did you just, you know, check the, do you, do the, you know, check people's door, uh, coats and things to the front? Yes, I just check hats and coats, unless they're really short staffed or, or one of the waitresses is sick. Oh, all right, perfect. Um, do you happen to remember, or is there a record of who served their table? I would like to ask them a few questions if they're available. I don't, I don't usually have anything to do with that, like I said, unless someone's sick. You could ask Tina if you wanted to. That, that makes sense. All right, fair. Um, point me out where this Tina could possibly be. All right, and she walks him All right, so, into the room. Uh, so as we're walking into the room, I'm going to just pull out my watch and start fiddling with it and use two sorcery points to subtle spell a detect thoughts spell. Okay. And then I'm going to, once she points out who Tina is, I'm going to start detecting her thoughts. Okay. So when she points out Tina, you see uh, she is a dark-skinned Asimar woman. Unlike in Inara, uh, instead of having completely golden eyes, it's just like a gold ring right around the outside of the iris. And there is like a subtle halo around the back of the head. Her hair is this steel gray. Um, she's very, very pretty. And she is stealing herself. Like her whole foster is like, oh my gosh, please don't be awful to this table of people that she's talking to. Um, so I'm gonna approach Tina and say, um, and you know, flash my badge and say, I just need to ask you a few questions. You're, you're Tina, right? Yes, I am. Uh, and she turns to the table and you can hear it in her mind, just like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will be right back with, you know, the drinks. I know only a couple of you have ordered. I'll ask someone else to come deal with the table. I'll be back. Just a sec. All right. You can walk oh. back. Probably the most private spot would be back in the hat check room because there's it's like a little bit removed from the rest of this much larger space full of people. And then I will gladly walk us back to the hat check room. Um, I'm gonna have my notepad. What's Felix doing out of curiosity? Um, can you make an insight check for me? Yes, I can. That would be a um, 15. Okay. Uh, he looks really uncomfortable, actually. That's too bad. <laughs> kind of trailing behind you, and he looks very uncomfortable. And so I'm just going to look at him and he's like, would you rather wait in the car? I No, I, I'm fine. Sure, you don't look fine. I mean... It is, it was, you know, it's late. I'm getting tired. Yeah, why don't you go take a, why don't you go take a nap? Do sit down in the car. It's, it's okay. I can handle it from here. Okay, that's okay. And he walks out. Um, as he's leaving, uh, Sev, this is when you arrive <laughs> at Silverleaf, stepping out of your cab. You pass by Adlin as you're going through. But yeah, a few I'm seconds. Because I think... I think he would. I think he would not know Adlin, but I had seen him around. Just, okay. And there's no response. Adlin just goes, sits in the car. Um, can you make a perception check for me, really fast? Yeah. Se Sev would also just go. That, that, that's about right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's a nineteen. Okay. So you see him, 
this person that you don't really know or anything sit in like the the front seat of a cop's patrol car and just breathe this big sigh and like sit like this with their head kind of up against the window and you can see just a little bit of tension in their face we'll go back to okay. Elhan and Vivian you're also in the in the hat check room as you would be so I'm gonna look at Tina and I'm just adding I would ask her do you remember a do you remember you know, your friend here said that a few nights ago you had this party it was a bunch of gnomes a half orc do you happen to remember them coming through were you here that night too yeah, yeah, I remember them. They were actually pretty nice. Okay. Is that what she's actually thinking? Yes, she was being honest yeah. about that. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, perfect. Um, did you happen, did you serve them, or do you happen to know who did serve them, or? It was me, yeah. It was you? I was perfect. very right. happy to take that table and get a break from some of the other usuals. All right, me, perfect. Okay, so um, there's, a, there's a gnome among them, um, kind of, yeah, uh, Nondescript name was An 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 Andrew Lyles. Okay. Um, do you remember seeing him? Was he here with the group when they? Uh... There was a few of them. He definitely. There was one that was rather loud and very annoying compared to the rest of them. So he kind of took most of my attention. So it's possible that he was one of the others. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. All right. Uh, what can you tell me about this loud, annoying gnome? I mean, the rest of them were calling him Maury and, you know, just he was he ordered a lot of expensive drinks, a lot of expensive food. And I think later he had the whole crew go upstairs into one of the more like private lounges. And so I, I, I don't go up into those so much. I work the, the floor. Who would go up there? Um, well, I mean, Mrs. Bailey would sometimes do. She she usually does manage that sort of thing. Okay. All right. Um, what are her thoughts currently saying? Um, she is very. <laughs> she is like, oh, who is this this handsome detective asking me questions? She is very much honest with you. So, um, Miss Bailey, where can I find Miss Bailey? Uh, she's probably out. Uh, her husband kind of manages the food and she manages the drink. So if she's not at the bar, then she might be probably going upstairs between the other lounges or anything. Oh, I don't know exactly where she is right now. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to just look at her, look at her real quick and say, People probably ask you how hard it hurt when you fell from heaven, don't they? They ask that probably quite a lot, don't they? Yes. I'm a suck. I'm a, you know, they, they, no one can think of any better pickup lines nowadays. Come on, dude, you guys. Making, this, making the rest of us good folks are looking bad. I mean, a lot of men are just very unintelligent and unimaginative. Mm -hmm. I'm used to that. You know, it's a shame, you know, hopefully I've, Maybe it's just how pretty you are. Your beauty just stuns them into stupidity. Cool. Babe, this one's real nice. I like this one. Maybe we should have crimes and all sorts of missing people here more. That'd be... No, that would be bad. But you can come by when it's not, you know, when you're off duty, too. Sure. Actually, um... I live here. Me and me and Viv, we live here up on the, the third floor. Okay. All right. Um... I'm gonna reach into my coat pocket and pull out a legitimate business card and mm hand -hmm. it to her. Like, yeah, think about giving me a call sometime. I will. And she kind of like tucks it into the the side of her top. And then, uh, um, I'm going to. This is go actually uh, this this final interaction. I think is when Sev comes in. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's Sev walks in and just immediately goes, "Hey, there's there's like a angry looking cat man out there, Tabaxi." Uh, someone should probably help him out. He he looks like he's not okay. Um, okay. Hi, uh, I need to talk. I need to talk to somebody. Private de private detective. Is that just what he says as soon as he sees this group of people? 
So I'm, I'm gonna turn and look at Sev and I'm gonna squint. Hey, I, I know you. You're, you, you were Unit 7. You were, in a, you were a data analyst, weren't you, for the police department? Yep, Unit 7, or Sev, as my friend calls me. Sev, like, is that, I is that what you prefer to go by now? I, you know, I, I voted for that I, act, by the way. I voted for that. I'm on your side. Oh, I, yeah, that, you know. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was, it gave me choice, which is weird, but I like it. All right. Uh, probably had choice all along with my thought process but yeah so cool. uh, so you go by Sev now yeah you can call me Sev so kind of says, kind of looking up. hold out my hand uh Elhan Elhan Anderson and a flash oh, my he kind of like this is this is the first time in a while he shook somebody's hand so he kind of doesn't he does it like a little too gingerly because he's afraid to hurt him and so I'm gonna take his hand alright so I'm gonna teach you a secret right now as you know detective to detective if you want someone to respect you Gotta have a good handshake. A good. He's firm gonna full grip handshake. this time. <laughs> full strength okay. grip. Not, not that, not that hard. Not that hard. You know, and watch me. I'm gonna take his hand and just very firmly shake it. You pro- I, I can't feel it because I'm metal. Uh, oh, that's well. I about you know. Don't try to crush their hand. Somewhere in between what you were doing originally and the crushing of their hand. That that would be good. Oh. Okay, yeah, I will try to do that. I have been told I need to work on my people skill by Tano, but um, she's also the only per- she's also one of the only people I talked to. So I will work. Oh, Got it. I'm glad to help. Yeah, um, I he, he turns he turns to look. He's like, I don't know if you're here for what I'm here. Like the police department finally let you go, um, but I'm looking for a get my notes. Andrew Lyles. <laughs> he's like, I'm looking for an Andrew Lyles. Uh, wife came to me today a little upset that the police department's not doing anything. Is that you? That would be me, and I'm telling you that I'm doing the best I can. I I, I fully believe you are. I don't believe the police department. He says, he's like, right. trust me. you in it for 20 years. You, you see what happened. I'm gonna just kind of like sit for a second. You're working this case? Yep. I am working this case. I'm, I, I get two. I get two whole gold. I already got one, and I think that's enough to probably pay for electricity another week. So, all right then. Well, um, I've already talked with these lovely young ladies here. Um, he he kind of waves to them as as they say, as he says that. And um, as you, you you saw my partner outside the tabaxi. Not okay, so that so he's a detective. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, got he's not, it. He's, yeah, he's not the most helpful. Um, I was. I might. I. I don't know if I remember him. My my memory's a little bit spotty after a long time of being active. That's, that's fair. How about uh, how about me and you? We work. We work this together. Sure, I I wouldn't mind that. It's been a while since I had a partner. My last partner doesn't really talk to me anymore. But he was a nice guy. He was a half elf like you. Oh, oh no, most half most half elves are pretty nice people. But yeah, I mean, I think n- niceness being spread across a race is not really a thing. People are individuals. But yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Yeah. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but if if you could have your conversation off to the side, you're getting in the way just a little bit. Okay. I need I need to check some more hats and and coats. And shields. He's like, right. he's like, oh right, and he kind of shuffles, just like maybe a foot or two off the side. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of the way as much as possible, and I'm gonna say, um, do you have any questions that you want to ask these ladies, you know, these lovely young ladies? Um, you already asked them about the nondescript gnome, correct? Andrew Lyles. They saw he him. Here. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess since you're still here, they did see them. I did see him, but don't really know what happened after they were here. All right, do we know where he might have been last seen? As far as I can tell, here. He left, and nothing after that, at least. I meant specifically in here. I, I know I didn't specify that, but I meant specifically in the... I mean, he was at his table. Uh, they went up to the private lounge. Mrs. Uh, Miss Bailey serves the private lounge, and I was about to just go ask her a few questions. Alrighty. Yeah, you should probably do the talking. I'm not good at it. 
couldn't tell. Alrighty. He puts away his notepad. He's like, and like internally, he's going. <laughs> All right. At this moment, we are now going to cut back over to Jean. You get a visit from your boss, um, Ayana, walking right through the center of the precinct. Doesn't seem like she has a care in the world. Ayana Latrell. Ayana Latrell. She is a pretty obvious figure. She has this very shimmery sort of pantsuit, wide shouldered, shimmering between like green and gold. She's got a black trench coat over it, but like her entire outfit is still very bright. And she herself being a summer Aladrin, she has shimmering sort of gold skin and bright blue hair and blue lipstick. Her whole thing is very, very bright. Like imagine joy from inside out, but this suave sort of elven figure, that is what Ayana looks like. She walks right up through the desks of all the officers. Nobody reacts to her. She walks right up to the door of the lockup. Hey, Glass. You wanna get out? Or you wanted to sit here with your new friends? You see, it is good to see you too, ma'am. Lovely as ever. However, you didn't give me any of the names that I need to speak to to get out. I've been stuck with these disgusting individuals for over an hour. Oh, I'm sorry. I got kind of so held up. Mind. I mean, I've got a key oh, myself. Course. I understand. I understand. I would like to get out, of course. You seem so and then understand. Glass. Are you okay? I don't understand why you permitted me to get caught. That wasn't me. We'll talk about this later, though. She pulls a key out of one of her pockets and unlocks the door to the lockup. Um, she kind of holds open her jacket for a second, and there you can see the handle of uh, a gun. She looks around through the rest. I need you all to just sit still. I'm only here for one person. This is not at a get out of jail free moment. All right, just stay and be calm, please. Ma'am, of course. They none of these lesser beings know who you are, but they know who I am. Don't have to worry about a thing. Glass has it under control. Okay. She, uh, as you walk out, she kind of like slips her arm around your elbow. Let's go for a walk then. We need to go check oh, something out. Very well. Lead the way. You stride out of the precinct and off down the street. So, I will be very honest with you, Glass. I don't know what happened. Thankfully, uh, Addis and Chad, they came to see me and let me know what had gone on. They seemed very worried, very concerned. Mm, they should be, because when I get a hold of them... <clears throat> You'll what? Um, I'll give them a stern talking to. I appreciate that. We don't want to have to pay for the replacements if you break them. Oh, oh, I would, I, I would not be doing the breaking, as you know. However, I might let Evie have it for a little bit. That would not be a pretty picture to come back to. No. But, so please, please don't do know, that. She, I, I, of course, of course, of course, whatever you say. We'll try to keep it in check. We don't want to make big splashes or big ripples, you know. Because if it's not Addis and Chad, someone else will hear about you going through them and taking them apart bit by bit. Or at least, you know, Edie. That's where you come in, right? Always. Now, uh, they'll be... 
He is a he's the source of his trouble, though, isn't he? That little Could quickling. Be. I never liked him. No, I never much liked him either. But you know, he's he's a cousin of one of the nephews of the Dom's friends. You know, he's got a little bit of that nepotism going for him. Mm. Makes him feel a little untouchable. There should be some laws or something against that. I'm sure there are, but I never read them, so I'm but. sure it's not as if it's not if it's something I haven't read, it's not important. Look, I trusted my guys that they were taking care of this business. That's what they told me. I didn't expect the cops to be there when we got there. Mm -hmm. I don't know who leaked it. All I know is I'll find out. And then can I let Edie after them? Sure. I might join in. If that's okay Ooh. with you. Uh, I won't be watching, you see. I just, uh, I already have to burn this suit. I'd rather not have to get rid of another one. And this is why I pay you so much so you can get, move through all these suits so fast. By anyway, that's way, not exact. what? Hmm? There's a new cop. And this one seems to have a little bit of a white knight syndrome. Oh, perfect. My favorite. What's his name? Elhan Gunderson Bumbledon Anderson, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd, I heard mention of someone new showing up. Uh, half of Ugh. revolting. Did, have you seen the color of his hat? I mean, it does match his trench coat. However, <sighs> in this weather, in this season, Ugh. abysmal. Well, I'm sure that I'll I'll give him a, a visit or a call later. If he's going to prove to be a problem, we're going to have to resolve it. But speaking of problems, I got a whisper. A little little uh, bird came and dropped by a message for me today. And we might have some issues over in the Aspen Quarter. The Aspen Quarter? Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I've been over there. You've relegated me to boars and gnomes recently. I'm so sorry about that. You know that I just need to pick who goes where. Have them be maximum effective. I know. They're so crafty. They make enough money that they're worth it. But they're disgusting. All that dirt. Yes. Well, so I've been... I have some sources who've been talking to me about some issues. Uh, Elton, over at the Silverleaf, he said he needed me to see something. He doesn't want to elaborate over messages or over the phone he said he needed me to come see it personally thing is i don't really want to go in by myself or even at all if i don't have to i'm a little bit more of a recognizable figure in that part of town you know what i mean mm, yes so i what i would like is for you to go in talk to elton for me if that's okay oh of course anything you ask you know but I don't like getting dirty unless I have to. Do you have anyone f to come with me? Let's, no, I let's be fair. Discreet. That's true. I mean, we've been a little lacking on the intelligence front in our newest underlings. Mm -hmm. All right. Ever since Bez retired, it you know he took a lot of people with him. Yeah, when are we going to get back at him about it? Once you're in, you never leave. No, we've got time. Centuries to deal with things. We don't have to act fast. Not for this. Very well. I will go by myself for this one. Uh, by the way, those thugs took my, uh, my persuader. Mm -hmm. I could use another one. And my uh, my aerator. 
Oh, you need one. Okay. Yeah. And they didn't log it in there. If, do you want if we if you want we could go back and get it? Are you particularly yeah. attached to this one specific one, or do you or do you want to borrow mine? Um, I'm not particularly attached. One is the same as the other. Just in case I need. <clears throat> also, I need to take some time, change my face, that sort of thing. The 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 temperature is a little hot right now for me. She looks around. It's like 60 degrees and raining. You sure it's the, hot? Uh, the metaphorical temperature, man. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, she reaches into her coat and she pulls out her long barreled pistol. It's very large. Um, packs quite a punch. I would like it back, so please don't lose it. Ooh. Okay. I usually use something a little smaller and more discreet, but whatever works. I mean, this is what I've got. It'll do. It'll do. I'll, I'll trust in your judgment. <laughs> Hopefully, is, I don't. This is why you're it. my favorite because you trust me, and that's beautiful. So beautiful. Passes you over the gun. She pulls out of. Uh, she's got like an extra dimensional little pocket for her three daggers that she's got. You want one of these too? Do you have something a little longer, more along the lines of a rapier? Uh, no, I don't. I guess. I, just like, you know, I like to get so in a little close. bit closer, you know. Exactly. That's where you and I differ, man. Yeah. But so do you want one of them? Yeah, I'll take one. All right. You get do, one do you have a disguise kit? Uh, yes, I do. She uh, pulls one out of another one of her many pockets on her coat and gives that to you as well. Your coat scares me. And I'm going to roll um, to try and disguise myself, make myself look a little bit more a nondescript kind of just plain elf. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Where's wood elf my... instead of a high elf. If I have to. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see. So I am proficient with disguise kit for being a mastermind. And I rolled a 17. All right, I'll take note of that. That is a very passable disguise. You feel pretty well different in yourself. How do I look? You're still wearing the same clothes. Yes. I guess if I'm going to cover it. Oh, thank you. You look ravishing, as usual. Thank you so much. So, yeah. go in, see what Elton wants. Call me late at night. And if there's serious problems, handle it. My two least favorite words in conjunction together. All right. Very well. I will get back to you before sunset. All right. I don't expect Actually, you to call me that already. soon. Maybe, maybe before tomorrow morning. But that's so inefficient. All right, all right. Before tomorrow morning, I will know something. All right. She uh, slips her arm out from around yours and disappears down a side street. You're left to yourself. I'm just gonna like shiver and kind of brush off my sleeve. She's even a little bit too evil for me. <laughs> And I'm going to look around to see that there is no company car and no taxi. Okay. Take a cab to the Silver Leaf. All right. We're going to return now to the Silver Leaf and you trio over there. All right, so we are searching off 
it's out, out, searching out Miss Bailey, correct? Mm hmm. Do you want yeah. help from Tina? Who will try and drag Vivian along? Seth Se turns and he goes, Do you do you know who this Miss Bailey is and or what she looks like? I I haven't heard anything about her, just her name, which isn't very helpful when look I mean, I'm sure these two lovely young ladies right here would be more than happy to help us find her. Oh, okay. I'm going to look at Tina and Vivian and say, care to help? Sure. We can try checking the upstairs lounge first. Perfect. Okay. So that Ellen sounds like a plan. <laughs> lead the way upstairs. Well, following them because they know how to get upstairs. <laughs> they find it the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> <laughs> So goes to you and goes, I like your hat. It's a good color. Thank you. I'm, it's, I like it a lot, too. It's, matches it matches your coat, which is why it's that color, but that's cool. Appreciate that. All right, Great. so we head upstairs. I'm going to start looking <laughs> for Miss Bailey. <laughs> yes, actually, as you... As you uh, climb the stairs, just as you're reaching the top, you see a woman walking towards the stairs. Um, sort of a human woman, sort of middle-aged, uh, wearing a white and black, uh, I would say a pantsuit, but she, it is a skirt and a jacket. Um, and she's got a black apron that only is like from the waist down, um, kind of running her fingers through her, her bunned hair, looking a little distracted, looks up, stops in her tracks. Uh, girls, is there an issue? No, no, Mrs. Bailey. These two gentlemen would just like to speak to you. I'm gonna flash my gold detective badge. Detective Anderson. Sev just goes, Sev, private detective. Hi, hi. We just, uh, we have a few, have a few questions about some of your patrons, some patrons that were here a few nights ago, and Rumor is that you might have been the last to see them. Oh, Where which ones? Very normal people. Very normal looking ones. They were gnomed. And they had a half orc with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember this group. He apparently holds the ladder, is what, is what Sev says. Apparently. Um, no, we just, they, we just had a few questions about, you know, Mostly about where they went after they finished their business here. Oh, I mean, I don't... I don't recall exactly where they said they were going. What do her they thoughts had, tell me? At this point, it's been longer than a minute, so I don't think your detect thoughts spell is It only lasts anymore. a minute? Yeah, it's only a minute. It only lasts a minute. Dang it. Yeah. Okay, then. That's fine. <laughs> I thought it was longer. But if you want to make an insight check, you can do that. I would love to make Can I also make an insight check? check? Yes. Viv, you can make one too. Tina won't. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 18. Okay. I got a 12. Fifteen. Okay. And her check. Um the only Elhan, you can tell she is not being fully forthcoming. She's very tense, very um, choosy with her words right now. All right. So um, next thing I'm going to ask is, um, do you remember how late they stayed? I think they might have been here all night. I brought them up some drinks and some other things I said goodnight I don't you know if they there's a bell in there that they can ring and I'll go up and see them they didn't come bother me for the rest of the night do you mind showing us did you not see room? them leave no I only work nights I'm not here in the morning so if they left during after I was off then I wouldn't have seen them do you mind showing us uh, my, which room which of the lounges they were in 
Sure. Uh, she turns. Uh, there might be... I don't think there's people in there right now unless someone snuck in without me noticing, but... It takes you down the hall and around a corner and through a door into a... Uh, it, it's a decent-sized room, probably, like, 30 by 30, with one of those cool sort of conversation pits where, like, it's sunk into the floor, this sort of, like, ring of couches. Um, there's some other tables and chairs throughout the room. And in one corner, there is uh, a piano up against the wall with a couple of other instruments just kind of sat on top of it. All right. Ma'am. Uh, go ahead. Sev would like to cast Detect Magic. Okay. You do see there is a small, like, small bits of magic, like, glamour magic to keep up the appearance of some things. Like, the couch is older than it looks. Um, the lights in here are conjuration lights that, you know, they're not, they're, they're lit by, like, that sort of magical electricity. Um, not anything that seems, like, super out of the expected, though. He turns to Alhan and he goes, there's no mad. It, it seems... Perfect. Glad. Uh, Ma'am, I have the sense that you're not being entirely honest with me. And I would greatly recommend honesty when it comes to particularly dealing with me. I'd like to make a persuasion check to attempt to persuade her to be honest with me. Okay, go ahead and make a persuasion check. That will be a 15 see her jaw kind of tense up a little bit. I like to be discreet. Some of our guests get up to things that they'd rather us not talk about. Things that they do in the privacy, especially of these lounges up here. Things that I prefer not to bandy about for the sake of the reputation of our customers. Oh, Ma'am, one of your customers man who was last seen here in this room is missing. His wife would very much like to know where he is. All I'm, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I'm not trying to get anyone else here in trouble. All I want to know is where he, where he is. That's all I want to know. And I didn't do that. I just got to ask you a few questions. And if you're honest with me, that'll help. Then I will do my best to give you answers that might be helpful. Appreciate that. What were our particular guests doing here in this room? What they told me is that they were celebrating some sort of big deal that they'd made. They were, you know, they started calling for more and more expensive drinks and other services and substances that we provide. So, so just goes, like drugs? <sighs> yes. Got it. And he writes that down. And you're absolutely positive you didn't see them leave. And leave the leave the seat, you know, leave, right? Yes. I am positive I did not see them leave this building. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'd like to roll any perception check as I'm just casually glancing around to see if I can maybe pick up on some clues or anything that might be have been left behind. Okay. Vivian, what do you want to do? You're just sitting and observing this? What do you want to do? She's just closely watching everything. Okay. okay. That will be a 14. So are you, like, going through the room and looking, or are you just doing a quick glance around? I'm just, like, I'm just around? doing a quick glance around to see if I notice yeah. anything. Um, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary, but it is a little bit hard. It's not very well lit in here. Can, can Sev do it after he does it? After watching him? <laughs> yes. I'm actually, what I was going to do is I'm actually going to send, use my, use a message cantrip to ask Sev to start looking around the room mm -hmm. for more... While I talk so the way to that I have always really... ruled message spells is that the caster and any response that is given is spoken. 
Like you say something and uh, they hear it tele telepathically. That's the way I've always I ruled message, message spells. If that makes sense, well then I'm just going to straight up ask <laughs> uh, Seb to start looking around the room. <laughs> so I rolled right before you said, I got a natural 20. Um, oh, nice. So it's 26. <laughs> Okay, so you start going through the room, looking into nooks and crannies underneath things. You spend a bit of time looking through the the sofa in the center of the room in the conversation pit, like flipping over cushions and things. You find um, exactly what you find. Um a couple of those teeny little, I think they're called nips, the little teeny bottles of liquor, they're empty. Um, and a couple of odd straps of leather, very small, very, very small, like a centimeter wide, like three or four inches long, uh, a sort of gray leather. You find like four or five of them. He, he turns to uh, Tina. What her name? What do you say to Tina? I'm sorry. Or, or are you trying to talk to well, like, Miss do Bailey? These, do these mean anything to you guys? Do you know what these are? Tina is just like, I don't know what those are. I mean, I imagine there's some sort of booze or something in them. She seems very excited to be part of this right now. <laughs> um, but Mrs. Interview? Bailey does That's not answer. That's interesting. Interesting. You can't, you can't take somebody who kind of rubs leather. Special about it. Um, so actually, the remnants of your detect magic spell would still be up at this point. You see there is a very faint enchantment magic about them like very faint as if they are like the cast offs or leftovers of something weird very, very weird as he pulls out like a little like container that he has and he puts it in there this is it he goes Elhan I found something I'll, I'll show it to you later okay perfect um he's like I don't think the liquor has, has anything to do with it I think they just drink but I will also put them in So I'm just going to look at Miss Bailey. Sure, there's absolutely nothing else you can tell us about. Nothing you can tell us about the, what went on here. <sighs> Not anything that I saw while they were here. Did you see something while they were gone? Or when they weren't here? <sighs> Possibly. I, uh, I need to maybe run this by the owner of the establishment because it is something that he is more aware of than I am. How, how right. long would that take? I mean, he's just downstairs. All right. Would you like me to go right. get him? Well, we he just looks at uh, uh, sure, yeah. Um, would you mind if my partner in point instead of accompanies you? Just like, no offense, make sure you come back. That's fine by me. Okay. I promise I won't hurt you. <laughs> he says when he walks over to her. That's very reassuring. I know I'm big and scary. That's why I say that. I, I try not to be big and scary, but it I was just... Okay. All right. Um, I think now we're going to move back to Gene as he arrives uh, by cab to the lounge. It's still raining. There's still a police car out front of the building. I'm going to uh, look into the police car. And s because obviously they look the same. I'm like, like 
looking to see, is there anybody in there? Is there anything in there? Mm -hmm. You see Officer Adlin. He is sat back. He's leaned back one of the one of the chairs in the front, and he's got like a cigarette like hanging out of his mouth. He's asleep. Very <sighs> safely sleeping with a lit cigarette inside of a car. <laughs> so safe. Uh, yes, precinct 12. It'd be so easy to just... That cigarette. Oh, not what I'm here. <clears throat> and I will enter the establishment knowing, recognizing the cat. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I am trusting in my disguise. You walk in, you see no, nobody is at the hat and coat check station. Hmm. Walk further I'm in, calling. you see the room of patrons with the bar. There's a small, there... there's like one little halfling woman sort of playing the piano in the front. Is there anybody that I would recognize? Like, have I had much dealings in here before? So you haven't been in this establishment before. This is a place that Ayana specifically would want to deal with personally. If you want to, you can make a history check uh, to see how much you have heard of what this place is. Ah, uh, well, she... Since she wants to deal with it herself, I got a nine. I don't ask yeah. questions. I just yeah. do what I'm told. Mm -hmm. I get paid better that way. All right. Well, so rely on my uh, green tie and on the code name uh, gift from my employers. Is there a bell at like the coat check? Yes, there is. <laughs> I'm going to walk up and I'm going to gently ding the bell and then I'm going to look down at myself and roll my eyes and realize I look like a half of what elf and go, ding! <laughs> <laughs> so Vivian, you being very tuned to the frequency of your bell, you can hear this even upstairs. She would take off and go downstairs. Okay. After a few seconds, you see Vivian coming towards you. Hello, welcome to the Silverleaf Lounge. How may I help you? Ah, uh, yes, 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 see, I am uh, a business associate of Mr. Elton, and uh, I hear, I'm here representing one of his uh, partners. I need to speak with him. We have an, uh, an appointment I've brought with him, a gift. Ah, uh, do you have a card that I could take back and check with him? I'm just going to kind of sit there and lost out like tapping on the counter. Uh, you see, how about you bring him out here? At all? May I let him know who's calling? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's Nick Glass. All right, then. I, I will go talk with him. And she disappears into the back. Thank you. Right. Uh, oh, and yes, uh, you just, here, here. I'm going to hand you my hat and my coat. Oh, all right. Just a moment, please. She writes out a little ticket. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Puts him up in the back first and then goes to the back. Goes to Elton's office in the back. Um, it's sort of like behind the stage. Like You have to slip up around the stage. And he's sitting there uh, looking through different uh, sheets of paper. He looks up as you enter. What is it, Viv? Yes, there's a Mr. Glass out front. He's demanding you come out and talk to him. Says he has an appointment. You see him immediately, like, set the papers down, lean up on his desk. Thank you, Viv. That's very helpful. Uh, yeah, why don't you, why don't you send him back here? That might be... It might be best. Okay. And she right. goes back out front. Okay. Yes. 
He, he says that he will see you, but he'd rather you come back to his office. If you just follow me. Yeah, yeah very well. Um, I'm going to reach into my pocket and pull out what is a acceptable tip and say, for the ravishing young woman, the only helpful person that I have dealt with today. Oh, why, thank you. Of course. I don't have a hat on, but I'm going to tip my real hat on. <laughs> And then she turns around and leads the way back to the office. All right. And then after you drop him off at the office, where do you go? If I don't hear the bell, the officers are much more interesting than standing there waiting for someone, so. (laughs) Yeah, we are. (laughs) You return upstairs. As long as Mrs. Bailey doesn't call her out on it, she's going to (laughs) keep... Mrs. Bailey is very tight-lipped right now. Um, not wanting to say a lot. Although, she does actually, at that point, pass you coming down the stairs with Sev as they head towards Elton's office. But for now, we have a few seconds. <laughs> with, uh, with Jean and Elton. Elton? I'm going to pull back my suit and kind of just rest it on the handle of the pistol. I hear you have a problem. And I, you know that I am not Nick Glass. Yes, I'm aware of that. Stand up. And put your hands where I can see them. This is my office. I asked, I asked, oh my goodness. You regalia people, so unappreciative of the things that I do for you. He stands up. Strike one. And I only go with two. Really don't think you know what you're talking about right now. Fill me in, and maybe I can make your problem disappear. I was under the impression I would be dealing with Ayana herself. She is usually the one who comes to see me. Yes. Well. Sorry to disappoint. Now. Getting. Running out of time. Don't think I didn't notice the police car out front. You're not going soft or thinking of switching sides on us. You see why I'm a little and I indicate towards the pistol jumpy. There's, there's a patrol car out front. That would be news to me. If that's the case, then we're going to have to act quickly, and I will need to show you instead of tell you, if that's all right with you. Very well. Show me. All right. And he reaches (sighs) under his desk. Maintaining eye contact you with the the entire time. Like, I'm not going to pull out a gun and shoot you, right? Pushes uh, something under his desk. You hear a little click. And in the corner of the room, a uh, door appears and swings open. After me or Maybe after first. you? I really don't appreciate that tone. And I think... Maybe by doing by showing you this, you will understand the full level of your disrespect. You're boring me. Let's go. He leads you down the stairs. And at this point I'm is when to... Sev and Mrs. Bailey arrive at the door. <laughs> Real quick, I'm going to close like, the door are, behind me. Are they me. gone yes. or are they walking in? So you are arriving at the closed door of the office. Do we do we just go in, uh, or do is there like a procedure that you? I, I understand. Mean, usually, you knock on a door. Is that I, not part of your I programming? Don't deal with people lo- no, that's not how we work. I, I was I was never dealt to deal with people. I just figure things. Out. Right. Okay. She knocks on the door. Um. Jean and Elton do hear the knock as they close the uh, the secret door and move down. There is a set of spiral stairs um, that continue up 
and also continue down in uh, Elton, his last name, Ashworth, uh, walks down the stairs. As he walks down the stairs, he begins to explain. So, while I myself am not a part of your organization, we do have some connections and some friendships with some of the people that are. And we have, from time to time, been able to take care of some of your members who get a little roughed up. You know, mm -hmm. go into the public hospitals, there's some questions that get asked that sometimes you don't want to answer. Right. So this is a place where, from time to time, we house your friends. Right. What I'm going to show you is a recent development just within the last week. Something that we don't really know what to do with. Uh, at I'm the bottom it. of the stairs, there is a simple wooden door uh, with a lock on it. Uh, Elton pulls a key from his pocket, unlocks the door, and pushes it open. You see a large room full of beds. Um, and most of the beds, there's probably about 10 to 15 beds. Most of the beds have people in them. And you hear just throughout the room, just quiet coughing. <coughs> um, what is happening? This is the issue we don't know. We have, you know, been carrying on with our business and as part of that, sometimes people come in and ask for extra services and extra substances, things that Ayana will sell to us and that we source from her. And in the last week, we have found that any people who partake of these substances, they have a bit of an issue the following morning and because we try to shield you from those questions that get asked at a public hospital we brought them down here see if we could take care of them ourselves we give them you know some sort of memory wipe after we get someone to come in and do that for us that was the plan but they're not getting better they're just getting worse mm hmm and tell me, are you continuing to distribute this contaminated substance? I mean, we've had fewer people come in and ask for it. We don't necessarily know if it is fully linked. Maybe it's some sort of other disease going around that we haven't heard of yet. But we have been trying to not recommend it so much. But people do pay a lot for it. Can't you cut it with something? I mean, I we don't have that. That's not our job. That's not what we do. So no. No. You mean taking a little bit of initiative and giving them a little less to keep I this don't tell people like, oh, you can only have so much or whatever. They're going to do what they're going to do. I try not to be involved. I try not to be seen with that. It's mostly Penny who deals with that. I'm not a master of these substances. We just get them from Ayana and then we sell them to people when they want them. Ayana gets a cut. I've taken the initiative Indeed. to try and reach out to her because I don't know what is going on. And if she knows, then she can help us through it. And this Penny, where is she? She's probably upstairs. She's, you know, the bartender, Penny Bailey. I can go and get her if you need to talk to her about it. She has been the one coming in to check on these few every few hours. Did you not hear that knock at your door? Going up there at this very moment, and bringing someone down into your secret hospital might not be the wisest I speak. Do you have any of the 
put the substance here. Yes. We still have our stock. Then take me to it. Because I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Unless you keep it under the bar. We definitely are not that stupid. And he walks you over to um, a closet off to like one side of the room. And we're going to move over to, let's see. Let's go to seven, Miss Bailey. Mrs. Bailey, she is married. <laughs> I have to remember, she is married. Her husband is the chef. He is the dude in the kitchen. Please knock on this door. There's no answer. Is this is is this how knocking usually works? If I'm if I'm doing stuff, usually I just kicked out. I mean, no, I. He's probably busy, or he's not in. He might be using the restroom. I heard sometimes people that have flesh have to do that. I don't think he would appreciate us going to the restroom to check on him. We could wait here. If your are, friend upstairs is getting antsy, I don't know. Excuse me? Are we able to, Are we able to go into his office if he's not in there? And just I wait for him I would imagine he would not like that. Would he like would he like knowing that the police would he like not knowing that the police are up there? I would think he would want to know so as to not let you in his office, if you get my meaning. I, I'm not police that's the, I'm independent. I'm I'm helping the wife specific. He just called me his partner. I I don't work for them any. You're working for a wife? I just met that man about 15 minutes ago. Okay. I understand. But you're so you're here looking for someone specific. Yeah, he he looks very normal and he was a gnome and uh he like looks at his notes. He's like his name was Andrew Lyles, apparently extremely nondescript. Um and the orc held the ladder. Okay. Well, the orc is not here. I could help you find the gnome. Oh. His his wife was really sad and I I don't like people sad. Okay. Uh roll persuasion check for me, please. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but not bad. Uh 14. She kind of closes her eyes. I mean, if the cops are already inside the building looking at everything, it's only a matter of time if something goes wrong. <sighs> okay. I don't want to go in his office because if he knows that I go in his office, there could be some real problems with that. I can show you. What if I just did what I usually do and kicked down the door? Is what he said. I mean, I guess he could do that. I, I, he can't fire me. Well, I'm not, you don't I'm not so much here. worried about getting fired as some deeper consequences at this point. What I would ask is if I help, that I get a little bit of protection so that I don't go to prison. I've not been I doing can... anything terrible. I've been trying to help people out. I, I am not... Uh, police officer, but I'm sure I can talk to um, them and see. I do have a little bit of connection with them still, as I did my job really well. Although the chief doesn't like me much, but I have other people. Um, I can. You I can make sure that You're not filling me with out. confidence right now. I'm sorry. I'm not designed to talk to people. I'm just designed to get things done and possibly take down people. I'm really Maybe good. Maybe we at should it, talk though. to the one who is supposed to do this and make these sorts of promises got it you should you he he probably knows people that could protect you and put you into action um most of the people i worked with either retired or died great that's really encouraging okay and she turns and starts walking i could back upstairs <laughs> he 
He goes, I can always protect you too. That's that's also something I'm capable. All right, okay. <laughs> and she she keeps walking. And she's like, <laughs> this robot man. Se- um, Sev just Sev just looks like he's so proud of him right there. <laughs> So, uh, you three upstairs. Are you doing anything upstairs while you wait? Um, I'm casually asking them questions, things like, how do you like working here? Whilst walking around and trying to see if there's anything that Sev missed with an investigation check. Okay, roll an investigation check. Um, that would be a, um, that would be a 22. All right. So, uh, Tina is very much following you along. Vivian, what are you wanting to do? She's trailing along behind Tina. She's, she's trying not to get in Tina's way, though. <laughs> okay. So Tina talks about um, how frustrating it is to be a waitress in a place where people come for the fine things and they don't like to hear no um but at least it's made up for by all of the uh, beautiful music the people who come do poetry they they sing they're really really good at singing um people who come to play all the, the instruments and people will dance it's really really wonderful and you know viv and i were trying to you know, make that our sort of gig too. So this is a, we're hoping for the opportunity to become, you know, a mainlining act in in the, in the lounge someday. We can, you know, show Elton what it, what we can do. Right. And for now, this just pays the bills because a, a girl's got to eat. Of course, of course, girls got to eat. Um, what is it that you two do? You, you, you sing, you play, what do you, what do you do? Oh, well, I sing, and I play the lute, and the flute, and the piano. You're a very talented young woman right there. How about you, Tina? I mean, I sing a little bit. Mostly, I tap. Like tap dance? Yes, that's what I do. One day, you're gonna, maybe I'll have to come watch you and watch you and see how it uh no, that would be great. Just whether or not Elton actually will notice us and actually let us do that. I mean, he hasn't already noticed you. You're just, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. You, know, you are you know, just, and... oh, you are my favorite. This is wonderful. And she kind of like sits down uh, and like is tapping on like the piano, like the keys. Uh, and you... Uh, out of like the corner of your eye as you're like looking around and examining things as she's pushing down on one key you see that there's like something odd about like the side of it as the one next to it goes down and you like reach forward and you tap on the key and there's a small little flare of like arcane light underneath it okay i'm going to start tapping, you know, just one by one, tapping the other keys, seeing if there's any other other keys that react similarly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, tapping around, looking through, you find a set of four keys that all let out this like kind of green light when they're touched. Okay. Um... Well, I guess I'm just going to start trying different combinations of tapping those four keys and seeing what happens when I tap those four keys. See if it's a specific order I can tap them in to make them do something. Mm -hmm. I won't make us go through all of them. After a few minutes of like going through the different combinations, there is a uh, sort of like those self-playing pianos in Westerns. Um, The piano plays itself through a chord and the piano sinks into the wall and then slides down and reveals a little open space with a staircase behind it going down. Okay, I'm going to think very hard for a second while I decide what to do. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I guess Elhan's gonna 
reach into his pocket and hold his pistol and just look at the ladies and say, it's probably best if you stay here for now. I'm gonna, I'll be back. I'm gonna start heading down the staircase. Okay. After a few seconds is when uh, Sev and Penny Bailey come in through the door. You walk in, Sev, and you see there's this big old like open space where the piano used to be. And Tina is kind of like looking through it. Sev, Sev turns and goes, I, my memory is spotty. That wasn't there before, right? No. Yes, he, he asked Vivian. <sighs> this is Bailey. He, he tapped some keys on the piano for a while and. I didn't know that we had that. Yeah, uh, that's a more hidden feature of some of the lounge spaces. Oh, okay, that, uh, I mean, he's found so, it. So she goes, we'll get you protection as he pulls out a gun and starts heading down the staircase too. <laughs> Tina kind of goes, oh goodness, <laughs> as you pass her. He's like, everything will be okay as he runs down the staircase <laughs> trying to fall after him. Tina kind of taps you on the arm. I really want to go and see what's happening. This is just so fascinating. I know, right? Maybe if we just, just a peek, just go down a little ways. Yeah, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? It's just stairs. Exactly, and it's a lot more interesting than what was going on before. We'll just go down just a little ways. Right. Following the stairs. Um, all right, if we need to take a break, now is the time to take a break. Does anyone need a break? I could use a little break. I need to take off this okay. jacket. It's way too okay. hot. Holy <laughs> crap. We'll take a break. Uh, we will come back into it with Jean. Is it? Everyone else is descending the stairs. Um, as Elton walks you over to this closet, it is the only other door. Well, there's actually one other door in the back of this space. Um, yeah, so we keep we keep basically everything in here. We've got the other medical supplies and other you know bandages and stuff. We also keep you know the stuff oh, that no, needs no. to be secret. Hey. Uh, make a perception check for me, please. I got a a uh, seventeen. All right. So as you were making your way across the room between the beds and things where people are laying, you kind of like glance over to these sick people. And you see kind of like on at the corners of their mouth, across the sheets of the bed, on the floor, there is like little speckles of black sort of mucus. Um, there's an odd sort of smell coming from it. Um, that they, There's mucus that they're kind of coughing up. Um, and you see as you come to this door that there is a small amount of it kind of oozing from underneath the door. Um, don't touch that. Why, what is, this is just, this, I'm not trying to kill you, that's not why Look I brought you here. Look underneath it. Yeah, this, this black stuff has been, they've been coughing it up, Penny's been throwing it out in the, in the bin in this room. You hear a, a sort of like hissing sound and the slightest hint of movement. You see the bottom few inches of the door start to kind of disappear and vanish as this black goop starts sliding out from underneath it with this like <laughs> noise. Um, I'm going to need you to roll initiative actually. And then this 
I'm gonna need everyone to roll initiative actually, because you guys are entering the room at this moment. Fifteen. Alright. Uh fourteen. I got a 17. All right. Um, okay. So as this foul-smelling black ooze slides out and this door is eaten away by it, um, Elhan, you walk into this room and you see um, these beds people coughing you see two figures across the room at a door as some massive sort of ooze is coming out of it we can't hear you i'm gonna say what is going on here so gene you hear a familiar voice coming from the room behind you where you were just at be a familiar face. Well, this is terribly unfortunate. I'm going to jump away from the ooze. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to attempt to put on an act. Oh, help me! Help, help us, please! We don't, we don't know what this is! Quick! Thank goodness that you all are here! We, we, there's there's yeah. nothing like I've ever seen before! So make a deception check with advantage, because it's not technically untrue, but you're kind of faking it. <laughs> oh good, I am good at this. Am I making an opposed insight check? Yes. A uh, unnatural 20. Okay. Yeah, I only got a 19, so. Yeah, the voice is oddly familiar to you, but you're, you're like, whoa, people in distress in a creepy basement. All right, well, um, I guess I'm going to move closer to examine the liquid. Okay. Um, it hasn't done anything hostile yet. It's just bubbling. Well, it hasn't right? gotten to its turn yet. So. <laughs> okay, cool. Because at this point, I just all I see is a bubbling liquid. Okay, mm -hmm. or a black liquid. Okay, I'm gonna go get closer to examine it. Okay, as you get closer, you don't see much extra definition in it. It's like tar, kind of in a pile. And you don't, it fills up the entire doorway. You don't see any of the room behind it. You do see little pieces of similar looking fluid on the ground around the room. Okay. Um, is that all for your turn? Yeah, that will A little bit extra on your turn. Um, Elton, he turns to run, and a pseudopod comes out from this ooze. That's going to hit here. Oh, boy. Forgot how hard this thing can hit. Yeah, so this black tar like pseudopod comes and like wraps up around Elton's face as he turns to run. And you hear this like of it as it burns away the skin of his face and he screams and he falls to the ground um alive barely um but still conscious well like unconscious but not dead yet um that is then Dean's turn
I am also running away with the disengage action. And I'm just going to keep giving. Help, please! Oh, help! We don't know what this is! We don't know what to do! Okay. Is that your whole turn? Yeah, as 60 feet as far as I can. Okay. The room is only like whatever 60 this by 40 is. or something. Not super big, but you're able to get to another corner. Are you trying to leave the room and like go up the stairs? Go up like to that yep. other door in the back? I am out. <laughs> Uh-huh. Which, which, where do you go to? Um, I'm going to go up the stairs from where the police officer just came from. All right, so as you enter the stairs, you are immediately blocked by Sev, who is right behind two guns out. <laughs> uh, hello there. Uh, you should probably stay put as this is now a no help please situation. help there's something down there it's it's killing him does Sev need to make a, a uh you can make an insight check insight now check. yeah we're gonna leave that 20 standing though okay all right that is a 24 not natural you can see that he's he seems a little bit more like overly frightened than he actually is. You can tell he's faking it a little bit. Seth just goes, sir, what is going on? Oh, it's terrible. Not, this not disgusting moving. thing just grabbed his face and it melted off and there's another man down there in a hideous coat. Quickly, you have mm -hmm. guns. Do something about it. Show me. Right. It is now the ooze's turn. The ooze <coughs> slides out of the closet up over the fallen Elton Ashworth and you just hear the sizzle as his body is absorbed and dissolved into this thing. Um, it focuses it, its little frontward part of it and starts moving its way slowly towards where Elhan is. It is not able to get to you. Um, but it is moving its way towards you. Sev, now it is your turn with Vivian on deck. Alrighty. Uh, seeing that, he is going to reach over um, Gloss and then fire with his Eldritch Cannon um, to try to keep it pushed, keep it away. Mm -hmm. um, we will... Does a 19 hit? I'm gonna or 19, say yes. oh, sorry, does a 24 hit? Yes, that very much hits. I just check the armor class Alrighty. of this thing again. Oof. I don't think I've ever seen an armor oh. class this low before in my life. Sev knows what he's doing with it. Uh huh. And he deals 7 damage. Uh, what type of damage? Uh, that would be force damage. Seven points of the blast, and it's pushed five feet, five feet back. Okay. From where it was. So this reverberating explosion rings out through the room. Pieces of this ooze are blasted off and splatter against the wall. All right. Anything else you want to do? So, so it's gonna be like, I'm sorry, I had to do that to you, sir, but like. You can get behind me now, but you should probably protect her. He and says you, as he kind of You look pushes through and you see him. a couple of, of ah! women on the stairs behind. <laughs> oh, they're up. Uh, mm. Lovely to meet you. There's more it's time. Them. All right. Vivian, that's you. So as she peeks around Sev, she says, Ew. What a nasty, vile piece of sludge! And cast vicious mockery at it. Okay. Because I have no idea what to hit different D and D monsters with, so <laughs> I'm just gonna try it. Um, I believe with that one, it makes a save, right? Oh yes, it does. It does a wisdom saving throw. That's a five. So go ahead and roll damage. One D four. 
which is a three. Okay. Do I get to add anything to that? Not familiar with Vicious Mockery, exactly. No, you don't get to add anything to that. But then the important part... Three. It is three is pretty good for a Vicious Mockery, and then it also yeah. just added on its next attack, so... Yes. Good. Okay, and disadvantage on... All right, anything else you want to do? Got two men in front of you. you she try and scoot duck them. back behind the men. Okay. And stay there. All right. Tina um, lets out a squeal, goes right back up the stairs. <laughs> she is not any sort of fighter or anything. She is a waitress, tap dancer. Um, Elhan, that's you. Elton is dead, so Jean is after Elhan. All right, well, I'm going to back up as far as I can, and then I'm going to cast Scorching Ray. Okay. Obviously, all three of the, you know, rays of fire will be hurled at that thing. So, we'll roll three attacks. First one is... First one would be a 22 to hit. That hits. The next one is a 21 to hit. That will also hit. And the last one is a 23 to hit. That will also hit. I'm pretty sure the only way you will miss this thing is if you roll a natural one. That'll be 18 points of fire damage. Okay. Great. Uh, so uh, this sort of gray and brown smoke uh, fumes off of this thing. Um, it It's awful, the smell of it, because it just fills this room, which is not a very well-ventilated room. So now the room is filling with this disgusting, disgusting smoke. Um, all right. Anything else? Nope, that'll be it. Okay, Jean. I'm going to look at me and say, I would run if I were you, and keep running. All right, so you scooch past these two, and you go up the stairs. You end up behind this um, somewhat panicking Asmar waitress uh, further up the stairs. Uh, I'm going to ask her, I'm going to very forcefully tell her that I need a phone. Now. Uh, make a persuasion check. Can I do an intimidation check? Since she's yes. terrified? Yes, you could do that too. It's more about getting her to, um, actually, like, connect her your words. She is freaking out right now. Yeah. Trying to make her more afraid of me than when she is than what is that there. <laughs> that would be a twenty-four. Okay. I think there's one up in Elham in Elton's office. And I'm going to You're gonna call the off. police? I think they're already here. I'm aware. But there's only one of them, and we could use some more. <laughs> Off. Okay. All right. Um, you are able to get up into Elton's office by the end of your turn very easily. Um, now the ooze's turn. Let's see. How smart is this thing? Very much not. So we're going to roll to see whether it continues to go for Elhan or whether it starts trying to eat the bed-ridden, afflicted in the room. Okay. Um, it's gonna go for Elhan. Okay. It is... Well, let's see. Because you were, like, ten feet away from it, and you backed off, right? Yep, as far as I could. Okay, which would be back over by the stairs which are 30 feet away. Hmm? 
And I blasted it back to five feet. Yes. So it's not going to be able to attack you on this round, but it is able to essentially, because it is large, kind of like lock y'all into the stairs. It passes through underneath and around these beds and comes right up against Elhan by the stairwell, um, kind of locking you in that space. Threatening to attack. Uh, Sev and then Vivian. Seth's gonna shoot it with just his regular gun. Okay. Is a 13. Does that hit? That does hit. That almost doubles right. its AC. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, and then he deals a total of 6 damage with that. Um, okay. But then he's going to use his firearm specialist feat to fire with his Eldritch Cannon. Okay. That. Alrighty, and then 13 hits. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the... He's going to deal four additional damage there, and then he's also okay. going what to. Type catch on fire. It, what type of damage? What type of damage? Fire. Is it fire damage? Yeah. Okay. Starting to look I hurt. Three choices. Okay. And then, do you move at all? I think Seth's going to grab Elhan, like by the collar, and pull him back as he starts to push Vivian back too. Okay. While <laughs> while putting away his other gun and holding it, holding that one. Okay, so I'm gonna say you can't move both of them. You can choose one of them to move. He he he's grabbing him, but he's putting his arm like this so that Vivian stays like where she is. Okay. Like, kind of holding her back, too. Okay, so if you're trying to stay between Vivian and the ooze, you're not gonna be able to move unless she is the person that you move. Got it. Okay. Is Elhan not right in front of us? Or... Yeah, it's like you are right in between the two of them. Okay. Yeah. I, th I think then I'm going to grab Elhan and throw him behind me so I'm in front. <laughs> All right. So Elhan, you get grabbed by the back of your coat and yoinked and tossed to the base of the stairs. Ask Vivian. Because you are moved without your um, own uh, movement speed, the ooze does not get an opportunity attack on you. I All right. It. All right, Vivian, that's you with Elhan on deck. Oh, dear. And she's going to back up the stairs um, as far as she can go, but still see the ooze. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to start whispering the discordant melody and cast dissonant whispers at the creature. Ooh. Is that another wisdom save that it needs to do? Yes. It gets another wisdom saving throw. All right, that's a four. Now we get to the fun part. Fourteen. Okay. All right. So you see, like, your whispers sort of shake this thing. Little flecks of it just sort of dissipate and scatter into the ground, no longer driven by this thing's sentience. You've moved up. You're only about able to move like 10 feet before you start losing sight of it. You can continue to move now if you want to, get all the way up into the office, or you can stay there. I think she wants to stay there and see what's going to happen. All right. Elhan, that's you. Dean coming up next. I'm use my last second level spell slot to cast another Scorching Ray. First one is a 23. Okay. Next one is a 13. All right. Still fine. The last one is also a 23. Okay. Okay. 
That'll be a 22 fire damage as I hold up my pocket watch and you know, it glows orange like flame and then three scorching rays come out of it to strike that black ooze that's gonna eat me for breakfast. Once again, the room fills with smoke and it funnels up the staircase. So in the office, Tina and Jean can see this noxious smoke coming in and pouring in through the room. Um, pretty soon there's going to be smoke filtering out the door and be visible and smellable to outside. Um, all right. Elhan, are you moving? No, like, there's not really much many places to move at this point, are there? That's true. You could go upstairs. Nah, I'm good. I'll stay where I'm at. All right, Gene, that's you. Well, I'm going to light the office on fire. Oh, yes? Mm hmm. I'm going to look in the desk drawer for a lighter that most likely all of these smoking people have mm -hmm. and then drop it on the desk with all of his papers and then run. Doable. Light these papers on his desk on fire and run out the door. Um, out through the back of the stage. You're like halfway through the, the main room at the end of your turn. All right. Now the ooze's turn. It is able to make it up to a sev and make an attack with another one of its pseudopods. Um, it still has disadvantage because of the vicious mockery, though. Let's see. That's a seven. Doesn't hit. Yeah, this failing and frail very much... Um, I can't think English right now. Smallified, shrunk, shrunk. <laughs> That's the word. Um, ooze attempts to hit you, but only is like slapping the floor around your feet. Um, great. Uh, all right. At Sev and then Vivian. Uh, Sev is going to clap his hands together and cast Thunder Whip. Okay. Uh, does a nine hit? It does. <laughs> okay. Thing has an AC of seven, in case anyone was wondering. All right, and then it deals 14 damage. Uh, how do you want to do uh, this? Lightning. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> lightning damage? One moment. Well, thunder, I mean. Is it thunder damage or is it lightning storm. damage? Please specify. Thunder. Okay. Thunder. Cool. Then how do you D want to do Beyond this? <laughs> okay. D&D Beyond only uses symbols, so I had to look at it. Um, he's going to, I guess, after Elhan had just scorched this thing, make sure they're good, and be like, hey guys, you should maybe cover, cover your ears. It's going to be a little loud. As he starts running forward and just immediately claps his hands right in front of the thing. Just trying to get it to, like, just get away, I guess, is his thought. But mm -hmm. not... Just kind this of spreading massive, it out is what the... This massive uh, booming explosion as the remains of this ooze are splattered across this entire room, uh, spraying all over the prone forms of these sick people. Um, there's like hisses of the remaining acidity as it dissipates and it is dead. Um... Above. So it just goes, is is everyone okay? I'm I'm sorry it got really loud like that. I just wanted to make sure it wouldn't come back. I'm alright. You hear Tina screaming from upstairs, oh my gosh, there's a fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. He <laughs> Sev looks at Elhan as they run up, I guess, and goes, Man, we just can't catch a break today, can we? Ha ha ha. That was a good joke, right? Sure it was, buddy. Sure. Ugh. All right. 
So you enter up into Elton's office and you see this flaming pile of papers newly lit. So not a massive blaze yet. Um, but Tina's kind of there. Um, she's like taking off her little waitress apron to try and like put it out. But it's definitely not big enough to actually do that. Okay, I want to attempt to use my frostbite cantrip to, you know, kind of cool the area around it and like start, you know, at least, if not put out the fire, but control the fire. Seb's gonna punch the fire. <laughs> I think the what cantrip is done? enough to uh, to Carpet. like shrink it <laughs> and put it out. All right. Um, okay. So the the ooze is defeated. The fire is put out, and Jean is running out through the the main room. Um, Jean, what is what are what are you doing? What are you up to? I am getting out. Mm -hmm. Where I'm are you going? Uh, I'm going to go out, and I am. What what buildings and places are around me? Real quick, so, I'm gonna zip in my the hat coat place and grab those. Okay, you grab your hat and your coat, um, and you burst out into the street. There are a number of, you know, your standard buildings and such. There's, um, there's a hat store. There's a little restaurant across the street. There's, um, a bank on the corner. I am going to... going to go into the hat shop. Okay. Would, would we see this? Would we see him run He's out? He's gone. His coat you've, and... you've spent enough time, like, putting out the fire. And we'll get back to what you guys are up to in a second. But we're okay. going to deal with Gene first. I'm going to walk into the hat store. Um, and go straight to the counter. Mm -hmm. And, excuse me, would you, uh, would you happen to have a phone that I might use? Sort of uh, somewhat elderly elven man looks up from where he's um, stitching something on the brim of a hat. Uh, uh yes, I, yes, uh, there's one around. You just go through that door in the back. There's just one right there on the hall, right on the wall there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very kind of you. And I'm going to walk over and I'm going to call Ayana. Phone rings for a few seconds, and you hear her pick up, but she doesn't say anything. What do you say? Send someone to come get me. We have a much bigger problem. What happened? You never know who might be listening. There's a bang. Ink on the corner. I'll be in there. All right. I'll see you in a few. Hang up the phone. Okay. You head over to the bank. While you are waiting at the bank, what are the rest of you doing? In this situation, I imagine Sev would go down. I couldn't hear that last bit. Try again. I said, I imagine Sev would go down and start looking for the missing person. Okay. In the, in the like, Hospital area. All right. What about the other two? Well, I was gonna look at Vivian and say, "He looks the only other person who could have answered what was going on down there. Just died. We need to find Mrs. Bailey before she scrams." Someone died. Who died? I mean, I don't know. It was the man down there. There were two men. The one who ran away, and then the other guy. You could tell that he was an elven man as well. They were both elves. He was an elf. You would know that Elton Ashworth was an elf. Oh no. The, the other gentleman that ran away was talking to Mr. Ashworth. You, you don't suppose... I'm afraid to say that it was probably Mr. Ashworth who died. Tino, what happened up here? Why is the office on fire? I mean, 
the 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 one with the green tie he came up and he was screaming about a phone and then he lit the papers on fire and he ran out the door i don't know why he asked me about a phone when he wasn't going to use the phone i told it was him it was in here did he light the papers on fire i don't know did you, did you see where he went no, I didn't follow him. He just ran out. I was trying to stop the fire. I wasn't, you know, I was more concerned about that than some stranger. Okay. All right. Understandable. Um, I'm going to go out and see if anyone saw where he went. I'm going to start asking the patrons and flashing my badge as necessary. Okay. Uh, so going through and asking the patrons, because the were not outside they did not see where he went they they can tell you he went out the front door all right then. um i'm gonna decide that probably figuring out what's going on here is more important than finding this guy so i'm gonna come back in and hopefully with vivian and tina and toe go find mrs bailey okay um so you guys are able to quickly like look through different rooms. You know where Miss Bailey, where the Baileys lived. You are able to catch both she and Mr. Bailey packing up their stuff and getting ready to go. You're able to intercept them before they are able to scram. <laughs> Mr. Bailey is a very large uh, human man. He's still got his like gray button up like chef's coat um, an apron around him as well. He's tossing clothes from the closet to his wife who's putting them in a suitcase as you arrive. I'm going to come with my gun out and I'm going to be like, no one's going anywhere. Hands go up. Okay. We didn't do anything, I promise. We were just doing what we were told. Right, yeah. I'm, sp I'm supposed to believe that. That you just were told to put a bunch of people in downstairs and have this black sludge try to eat anyone who came through yeah that's that's what i'm supposed to believe black sludge you mean the stuff that they cough up because that's what, that's what they've been doing for the last couple of days is as they get sicker and sicker they're coughing up this stuff you you're telling me that these people those people have been down there for days yes the first one that we found was I think like eight or nine days ago about a week ago and Mr. Ashworth said to keep him here they you no know, they fall asleep and they don't wake back up they get sick and we're trying to help them trying to get them over whatever this is but they're just getting worse and worse and there's nothing that we could do about it except for keep hold of them unless you want us to go dump them in a river which we didn't want to do I want you to take them to a hospital Mr. Ashworth said we weren't supposed to take them to the hospital. The stuff that we do here is a little bit delicate. And, you know, the que the people at the hospital ask a lot more questions than we do. It didn't become apparent to you that you clearly did not have the capability or skills or facilities to take care of those people? That was pretty obvious yesterday. When we kind of gave up on, you know the tactics we were using, and Mr. Ashworth said he was going to try and find somebody. Look, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a, I'm mostly a gin specialist. I do, I do dabble in whiskey and stuff. I'm not a doctor. Who's going to find somebody? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to call um, whatever this, uh, the equivalent of 911 in this world would be and get, you know, and get some the medical attention that these people need and you aren't going anywhere because at this point you've been aiding and abetting an illegal hospital so and unless her you have, face just falls <laughs> unless you have some really good information or something that you can tell me to convince me to you know either not press charges or lessen the charges you know you, you know, you're under arrest. 
Got nothing else to tell you. And, uh, like, they just kind of fall silent. They sit down on the bed, kind of look very dejected and arrestable. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out a set of handcuffs and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handcuff them to each other. You know, because I only have, I'm, you only carry one set of handcuffs at a time. Yeah. Here, here. She carried two. <laughs> He's got a partner who has the other one. He's asleep outside. <laughs> and I'm gonna look at Vivian and be like, "There's a there's a sleeping tabaxi in the uh, in the car, um, in the patrol car out front. Can you go get him up here?" Oh, okay. Thank you. And I'm gonna look at Tina and say, "Tina, can you can you call the plot appropriate equivalent of 911 and get them <laughs> and get yes. them here?" <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah. I think that's a 5E just here. <laughs> just whatever that is. Um, which, what? What is E? I think it's 3? 533. <laughs> she goes down. She calls 911. I'm just going to stay with my two prisoners. Right. Sev, you are able to find um, a little gnome in one of the beds. Looks very nondescript, very average looking gnome guy. <laughs> is, I'm going to guess he's unconscious and coughing it up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, there's he's just like alive, little though? dribbles of this black goo coming out of the corner of his mouth. You can even he's actually see a little bit of a build up around like the corners of his eyes. <coughs> he, he just kind of looks. She's going to cry. If I tell her this. I have, I have to figure out how to. How to how, how to make him different? I I don't know. I I need to go talk to him, and I don't know. Um, and so he's like he's extremely like he he's extremely emotionally distraught, but he doesn't know what emotions are. Um, so he's gonna go he's gonna go up and find Tina, I guess, and be like, "Do you know where Elhan is? I I have our guy. It's not good." He's standing there. Um like talking to police um she kind of like uh upstairs third floor fourth on the right and hey, she goes back you, to Tina. the phone call i guess he's gonna go up to alhan and see him sitting with the prisoners mm -hmm. okay. hi hey okay. alhan um is this a bad time no i mean what do you find anything our our guys are he it it doesn't look good um and his wife's going to cry if we tell him if we tell her this that he's like this and i don't know how to handle that so can we solve this please i i might need some help yeah i'd, I'd be willing to help you that it might be best if we just tell her he's in the hospital not necessarily tell her what's wrong with him she she's going to want to see him in the hospital i've dealt with this before and in this situation, I don't think it's for her to. Well, then I'll just leave it to the doctors to keep them out. Keep them out. That's not my job. My job is just to find oh, them. Oh, okay. I okay. That makes sense. I'm gonna I'm gonna go take a walk. Okay. And he's just gonna walk out. He's gonna go for a walk. Um, Jean, you stand in the bank out front of the door. Where do you want to be? Um, I'm going to go into the bank. Okay. And I'm going to look around, see if they have any, like, pamphlets or informational things that I can pretend to be looking through while standing waiting out in, through the door, or looking through the windows for my car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you stand there for a little bit. does not take very long before you see black company car pull up in front of the bank. And off I go with some trepidation. So you open the door of the car. You see it sitting inside is Ayana. We have a problem. And strangely enough, not one I can solve. Oh, please explain. 
we might want to leave, chances are it's going to become very, very busy around here very quickly. Remember that white knight I told you about? Mm-hmm. He was here poking around. Elton is dead, but I didn't kill him. And we're probably going to have to look into our suppliers. Whatever we're selling is making people cough up black sludge monsters. He leans up to the front. Tony, go for a drive around the block a few times. Uh, she will ask you to explain and describe to her wh what happened. How much do you what want to tell her? Will you hold anything back? Uh, no, I'm not dumb. Um, okay. She I arrived. I rather quickly got an audience with Mr. Uh, what was his last name? Ashworth. With Mr. Ashworth. Rude fellow. Not nearly as uh, intimidated of us as he should be. Um, and he took me downstairs into a what appeared to be the most horrifically run hospital I have ever been in. Which, thanks for the heads up. Appreciate that. Um, and I then, apparently... Well, so did I. However, a little bit more intelligence next time would be so. Noted. And then he, as we walked through, he was explaining to me that these individuals that partook of some of our uh, wares are uh, consumables that are neither food nor drink. Um, the next day would wake up unconscious. Wake up. I mean, would not wake up, would be unconscious. And then they started coughing up black goo. The One of the employees then just decided to scoop it all up, put it in a closet, and it turned into a monster. And I left. Um... I also tried to burn the place down. It didn't work. As it still stand. Hmm. She's kind of got her head turned away from you. She's got one of her daggers kind of like in her hand, kind of spinning it around. Um, this does sound like a bit of trouble. I'm going to have to talk to people about this. Jean. I'm probably going to need someone to get a little bit more information. Because if the cops are going to show up, I can probably get a bit out of them. But if this white knight friend of yours is looking around, that might be a little bit tougher. I don't know if we can, uh, flip him. We might have to, uh, eliminate him. It's doable, but that's what got us in this mess already. Yes. I hate cycling through cops because the new ones always try and be nice. They try and do the right thing. I'd rather just keep the team that I've got. If we can work around him, that would be better. Well, I might need to know who we have in the 12th precinct. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's few that we don't at this point. In one way or another. What about his part? Adlin? Oh, it's he's been in my pocket for years. I've always wanted a pet cat, so I snapped that up right away. And the captain? Less of a snake person, but he knows he knows who I am. And does he know who you are who you are who you have? 
Does he know who you are because he is cooperative or fearful? More the latter than the former. But either way, it ends up being the same thing. And the goon squad, the ones that dragged me in this morning. I'm less familiar with them, but that's part of another question that we'll have to answer. Can we arrange some accidents for a couple of them? They messed we'll up my again. suit. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it. Like I said, I don't like cycling through police. I like it to be predictable. I like it to be understood. So, you can go home. You can take the night off. We'll probably call you in the morning with some other things. This is a problem. I would rather we fix it before it becomes a big issue. Because if the Dom gets upset, if he gets wind of this, that is going to be trouble for both of us. Okay? Understood. Okay. The, she snaps her fingers. Tony pulls the car over. She uh, opens up her door. Have a good night. She leaves. That is where we are going to end tonight. We'll pick up tomorrow. With whatever is going on in Shade City.